Uh, with two things. One is, one is, many of you have already used to what I'm doing currently in my life. <laughs> so I am, I am actually the managing director of an institute called uh, the Bertrand Institute uh, for the Study of System Science in Vienna. Uh, my uh, responsibility is to uh, create the conditions for researchers that they can research on uh, systems of study. So it's not uh, only systems research, so it's by systems research, but also reflecting on <coughs> systems research. We try to approach it with a um, robust uh, scientific approach. Uh, by coincidence, because I am also talented for creating communities, I was asked to become uh, the general secretary for something called the International Federation for Systems Research. It is an umbrella organization that uh, uh, represents and, and also connects uh, research institutions, not individual researchers. They are, of course, part of their institutes, but uh, so that we work together on the um, advancement of systems science <coughs> and research. There is a differentiation between science and research. <coughs> because science really follows the scientific methodology uh, and research is, is uh, a more holistic approach to uh, understanding and also intervening in systems. Um, so, I'm, I'm just telling you that because I am not <laughs> the one who is actually the, the one who carries the knowledge. I am more like the facilitator of the knowledge creation. <laughs> so I am very sorry that not the, the wonderful people I work with are here, but okay. yeah. <laughs> I know a lot or a little, or, uh, as, as far as I understand, but what I will present today is what I understand, what I've learned from them. Um, th th this is, this is my, my, my first uh, framing of what I, what I will tell you. The second is when I came here, I was really puzzled because what, what would I like to present and the list was very long and gladly during the days my list in my head got, uh, okay, has been addressed by, has been addressed <laughs> because you said all these wonderful things I was thinking about, I should give as a context, so persistent thinking, so I do now more, uh, uh, more concluding, maybe more, more concluding uh, uh, talk. Uh, and thirdly, I, 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 I took some books with me, only those who were not too heavy. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, uh, because I was, I was wondering if you would be more interested in, in, in systems from a scientific perspective, we put them together. This uh, wonderful book, for instance, on the general systemology, which is uh, brand new, <coughs> has been published uh, last uh, month. Or I have also brought books with me <coughs> that show the practical uh, um, uh, methodology towards uh, uh, systems thinking for everyone or systems practice how to act in situations of uncertainty and complexity in a climate change world. There are two examples where you can, if you want them later, <coughs> see how it is pre presented to people who are not system scientists but who may consider themselves systems practitioners. Um, uh, because, again, there is a... So systems thinking, where does it actually originate? It's originated in, 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 a, in, 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 a, in a variety of scientific trajectories. These are the ones that have, has informed uh, uh, how we uh, conceptualize today systems. <coughs> this picture is uh, uh, from Ray Eisen's work. Uh, a colleague of mine, and uh, it, it looks, I would say, the, the most uh, impactful trajectories. Uh, and also, what is interesting for me is that he's distinguishing between systems as epistemologies and systems as ontologies, as we had this discussion in the last couple of, of, of days. So, you can see that systems are nowadays approached from both perspectives. <coughs> Some are more than uh, ontologically, more. Uh, 
combinations, but <coughs> you can also see that from the, uh, let's say, also historic uh, point of view, <coughs> there has been something like, uh, at that time, maybe you, could, you would call it interdisciplinary uh, discourse, uh, biology, mathematics, physiology, economics, sociology, philosophy, and process philosophy have informed something that is called the general systems theory that you might have heard of, uh, which was, as it is said, uh, uh, founded by Ludwig von Bertalant, who was an Austrian biologist. So actually, system science comes from, or stems from, uh, the so-called exact sciences, uh, uh, natural systems, natural science, uh, but then also very, very quick, uh, uh, there was an attention drawn to it from actually a, 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 a more social science perspective. So in, in 45, 1945, sorry, so <laughs> last century, uh, when these people up there <coughs> met, and this was Bertrand Antimila, Rappaport holding uh, at, in Stanford at the Institute for Behavioral Sciences. Uh, they had a very, um, let's say, for me, this is my interpretation, pragmatic uh, uh, question. Uh, how uh, to explain behavior of natural systems, but also then also very quick uh, into social systems. And also then it was a, a psychologist and a physiologist part of it because they thought that the human perspective is very important. So not only from a collective but also from an individual uh, point of view. Um, you have there more names of course. But the general system theory was something like, maybe you can call it a leverage, a, a tipping point, an in initial uh, Start. And then <coughs> you have, because of mathematics, computing, information theory, engineering, control theory, anthropology, physiology, biology of cognition, experimental epistemology, and science studies came in, you have different other influences. And this is why you have now also something called operations research, the complexity sciences, which has been informed by the first order cybernetics, where it is about, uh, more about the control uh, and information flows. Uh, but then also second order cybernetics, which most of you are familiar with, where it is the question of uh, uh, how we construct our uh, uh, perception of the world. So you have past, not the first here. Uh, and then you see, meanwhile, how uh, broad this field, and also specialized, this field is currently. Um, developing, <clears throat> and the interesting part now for me personally, I will not go to all this, I hope you can, you can read some, uh, you maybe have been in contact with some of these uh, schools of thought, but the interesting thing for me is that in my personal work, I experience this diversity on the one hand as a wealth, so uh, there is a lot of, of uh, uh, potential of, 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 of new developments, but also as a limitation, so as a constraint. Because as you can imagine, <coughs> any discipline that becomes uh, uh, then specialized in itself, medicine is also one of those, some of these specialists then cannot talk to the other specialists, although they share the same uh, uh, knowledge base from a disciplinary point of view. Uh, and also, and this is also something we experience nowadays, or I experience very personally, is we have a very vivid debate about the question of uh, uh, can we actually apply the scientific methodology, which we have been already introduced in uh, working together, uh, to systems, uh, science, and research. Or uh, is it that we now know that there is uh, no such thing, maybe, so this, uh, as a as a reality, like take the take all the all the consciousness out, take all the observers out, right? Is there something we can actually explore, or do we have to reinvent 
scientific methodology taking into account the observer. What the observer says, it becomes then a collective uh, approach. So, um, you have such wonderful books. So, 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 if you are looking at, at, at you want the one book that uh, combines all the scientific. I'm not talking about the science and scientific. Uh, no, what we know today from a science perspective about systems. Um, I, I recommend George uh, Mogul's work, Principles of System Science. This is a big book. I couldn't take it with me, even though I like it, because it's quite heavy. It's 755 pages. But what you find in there, and this is why I really like it, <coughs> any of these, what I've presented before, approaches, uh, very detailed, um, uh, from an epistemological point of view, from a methodological point of view, but also then, from this formal point of view, which is the scientific methodology, also formalized systems. So with any of these approaches, you will have also a mathematical point of view. And this is why it is the most comprehensive uh, book nowadays in, uh, available, in my, point, uh, in my opinion. Um, I also took something out of this book so that you can see uh, how an introduction to uh, what we also from really from a science point of view we, we, we see as systems. Uh, this is one of these, these models that says uh, we, the systems in the mind, mental models, uh, we construct and refine systems in the abstract mathematical uh, mappings. So there is systems in the mind before. Uh, in, from a scientific perspective, we also think about systems in the world as objective reality. And we learn and construct from this objective reality, but this, the, the, the mental models actually form them. Our abstractions are very similar to what we do. Uh, through these mathematical ma 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 mappings, we are able to predict further uh, and thus inform our mental models. This is something where my thinking also comes from when we're talking about induction, for instance. Uh, uh, mathematics helps a lot uh, of induction. Um, then we also have this one, which is systems in software, and George Mogos actually is a systems uh, engineer, so a software engineer, uh, and he's completely into that topic <coughs> to construct uh, 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 systems in software, and then also these systems in software, of course, have an influence on the on the on the reality of, of the world, uh, but not as an independent, but also in, always interdependent. And also, he, this is one of his pictures. <coughs> I think I cannot go into the detail, but you see how many uh, necessary knowledge bases you, you take into account if you really, from a scientific point of view, conceptualize systems nowadays. Uh, and we have heard a, a lot about this already, so, but you can see that um, uh, uh, cybernetics and information theory is nowadays also included, as well as what we have talked about, the dynamics, the thermodynamics, the organization, structure, networks, etc. Um, <coughs> computation, logic, modeling, relational thinking, and mathematics are the uh, approaches we take from a scientific perspective. Uh, we, uh, George and uh, has not by himself, but in uh, <laughs> uh, relation to many others in the field, uh, defined uh, 12 principles of system <coughs> science. Um, I think I cannot system science, <laughs> and, uh, and 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 I cannot go into the detail of these discussions. But this is something that uh, is agreed upon system scientists. Uh, uh, even though it is not agreed upon that we have one definition of systems, as many of you may know. <coughs> uh, but uh, you can see that we are talking about the bounded networks. Uh, we'll talk about that then from a more practice point of view. Uh, processes organized in structural and functional hierarchies. This is also very, very interesting for me because uh, <laughs> from, an, from another perspective that comes from total different epistemology, a lot of people were always talking about uh, uh, two networks, it is the end of hierarchies. I don't know if you know these discussions. This is more between people that are coming from practice. Uh, 
and, uh, and, and you can actually show that any network is in itself a structure and, and, and function and hierarchy, but it does not mean <laughs> that it is uh, from a political point of view the hierarchy, it is more from a uh, science, nature science. Then also, uh, it is about networks of relations between the com components. The dynamic is, is, is to be uh, addressed. Um, uh, complexity, the systems evolve. So it is said all systems evolve. Systems encode knowledge and receive and send information. Systems have regulations, subsystems to achieve stability. This is also very interesting because uh, uh, knowing the system and knowing the subsystems uh, and, their, and then their um, interrelations is uh, uh, of important. Systems contain models of other systems, which is very funny. <laughs> sorry, sorry it for goes me. with the presentation of the yeah. yeah, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, this is it. <laughs> um, uh, then uh, sufficiently complex adaptive system can contain models of themselves, also what Peter has been referring to. So um, systems can be understood and systems can be approved. Uh, this time, uh, something that science uh, agrees upon. We have worked in this work with the general systemology on something similar <coughs> as we try to understand uh, how all systems, uh, science, further enhanced. Uh, we did something uh, we referred to later that you could say it was a, uh, was a not only systemic approach but also a systematic approach. So we tried to understand how knowledge is created uh, in, a, in a discipline uh, and why did we do that? Because then we have a, a framework so that we can uh, decide which parts of the framework are already then developed and which parts are still missing so that the robustness of the discipline can be enhanced. And this is why we did this work uh, and um, uh, we have now done a lot of work on the guidance framework, the domain view, the world views and the terminology, We're still in work, work in progress, uh, activity scope, uh, is to be collected and then as you can see uh, we also want to in the future work with the questions of the knowledge knowledge base that is really data driven uh, theory building and, and from theory comes epistemology and then comes the epistemology. Um, the next picture is maybe for the 35 minutes a little bit too big but the idea we have developed was from a scientific point of view, can there something be like a general systems transdisciplinarity? Uh, those who may not be familiar with systems and general systems theory is, uh, we have heard these days about the uh, grand unifying theory. I think that was com coming from you, right? Me? Yeah. 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 Oh. No, no, that's, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> okay. And there is, there is this idea, there was I this already. Theory. No, I already dissolved that identity yesterday. I'm no longer that identity. Oh, <laughs> that was yesterday. I was interested in that yesterday. Now I'm no longer interested in that. And now the world is processing. Uh, yeah. I'm totally. So, now I'm, so the Cadell from yesterday right. said uh, that idiot. something about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm gone now. I like it very much. <laughs> 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 so, but, but there was this. There was this idea yeah, that, that, the general, that the general systems theory would be this one unifying theory, actually, because it should address uh, the systems, uh, not only principles, uh, but uh, more the, 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 the something like uh, at that time, I mean, historic point of view is, is the system laws, maybe even, huh? uh, similar to Newton's laws, so that uh, all systems that was the that was the assumption and made it be natural, social or technological would have the same uh, uh, structures, behaviors, new structures and so on and so forth. And dynamics. <coughs> uh, what we know today is that it will not be a grand unifying theory, <laughs> but maybe it could be a unifying theory. Uh, 
uh, what I said in the research team, and I wasn't too popular with this, I said, I wouldn't mind if we do not reach that point, because I would love to walk the path towards this, this idea. Uh, on this path, we might indeed explore and, 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 and find uh, some relevant knowledge, even though we may not become the, the great unifying theory. But as a transdisciplinarity, and this is not something completely different, it may indeed work. So, um, well, but then how, how to would be now a, a special lecture. But the idea is still uh, on the table that we can together, like not only one research team, but many research teams we are now trying to uh, support um, in their specific domains, in their specific disciplines, explore systems in a framework that is agreed upon. And then we can hopefully in the future prove that the idea of isomorphies, as it was called, is indeed uh, 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 proven, can you say that? Mm -hmm. Valid uh, approved. Approved. Uh, validated. 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 The, 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 the point I just looked up randomly is uh, in regards to like the 12 principles of system science. Yeah. It's interesting it says here that the meaning of, and it related to grand unified theory, yeah. like the meaning of 12 is considered a perfect number in the Bible and symbolizes God's power and authority as well as serving as a perfect governmental foundation. It does. So it's, it's, it's absolutely but parallel it here with the general system it science. It was so non-random. You know, <laughs> non it was meant to be. Just, <laughs> it, but, that's it's it, but, but that's interesting to think about. Not yeah. free. Huh? Not but, free. But the other th the question I have, the question I have is you as a system science, uh, as a system scientist and the grand unified theory, is like on the first day you emphasize that your your system science and your Buddhism are practiced separately. And then this c comes back to like the, the point I was trying to make with the Grand Unified Theory is that it can't handle the subject, right? Like it, it's just a substance with no subject and that you have to like think together the substance and the subject. And then like with the 12 principles of, of system science or whatever, isn't it that they, it, like we were talking about, it can't consider this dialectic of something and nothing. Right, so the, the maybe the, the, the system science is, is is handling the something, but is not dialecticizing the the nothing. There is, yeah, there yeah, is yeah, a, yeah. a very interesting book which was on one of the former slides by Gerald Mitley. Mm. Yeah. It's called Systemic Intervention. Mm -hmm. it's, it starts That's with good. the epistemology, mm. then the methodology, and then practical examples. Mm -hmm. And and these two, uh, the epistemology and, and the methodology are really and he's. Deconstructing the subject object uh, opposition. Totally. We have 10 minutes. Yeah. Okay. It's like this is uh, okay. supervisor. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, <clears throat> coming now from science to practice, <laughs> I think, and this is not my picture, but this is also again from Ryazin, that it may need uh, both perspectives if you are really dealing with a real world complex problem. Um, the systematic as well as the systemic approach. Um, <coughs> these, the pictures again reference to his work. Um, the first question a system in a system's practice is, uh, by the way also in science, but uh, now coming really to the practice is to define your system. And we have heard that already. Um, it is Peter has then shown the formal uh, language, it is always uh, this distinction. Yeah? So you make a conscious distinction between what is the system and what is not the system. So the, the boundary that is drawn is not by the reality, <laughs> when I can say so, but the decision of either the one researcher, subject, or the collective team of practitioners uh, to say this is the boundary and this is this is the this is the system. The next question then is, what are the subsystems? 
that make the systems the system actually uh, work. And <coughs> um, and this first question is where subjectivity comes in, anyways. <laughs> yeah. Then you have found the critique. Then I have found the critique. Um, and here is something I really like uh, as, a, as, a, as a picture. It is, um, this is what happens uh, in systems practice. I would also say it's in, in the research, but the uh, practitioner itself uh, has his mental, her, her, or his, her or his mental models, <coughs> choosing a framework under which he then defines the system as a boundary. So, to say this is what I look at, and this is what I don't look at, or this is in and this is out. This is the this is the core, and these are the relations, and these are the these are the environment, and this is the relation with the environment. <coughs> but the framework defines that, and of course, the more we know about the system, it might change the framework we are applying. <coughs> and the same goes here. The methodology should be uh, chosen based on the knowledge we have about the system, the frameworks we have chosen to approach the system. And so uh, it is again uh, a feedback loop. Uh, uh, thus, uh, it is not um, consistent. Ah, here is called situation, but, uh, what I'm looking at. And uh, it is not consistent which frameworks we apply and which methodologies we very situation-based and practitioner or researcher-based uh, decision. This is where the subject and the... And from what you are showing here, it uh, should be kind of the methodology to use always more than one. Yeah. Because if not your self-affirming uh, yeah. uh, yeah. what you think. Yeah. It's true. Also, uh, this, this changes in time because whenever we are dealing with one of these situations, uh, we actually change them, right? Or our understanding of them changes. Or So <laughs> this is a, not a, a first and ever decision, but it is an ongoing decision. The more understanding we gain, the more we will apply uh, frameworks and uh, methodologies. I like this. Uh, idea because it shows a very conscious or, or reflect, reflexive, is it? Mm -hmm. Self, self reflective mm -hmm. uh, approach towards the world, towards our understanding of the world. <coughs> um, then there is this idea of uh, how can we actually gain this knowledge, and <coughs> this is. Uh, no, no coincidence, this is a so-called nested view, that means <coughs> we need to have the one and the, and the other one stands out a bit. So <coughs> the idea is that we all have something like a systemic uh, sensibility, like from, from childhood on, we have an idea of the interconnectedness uh, as human beings, but uh, we may not have the system's literacy to express this sensibility. Uh, so we may want to gain, we, we may want to gain a basic system literacy or enhanced system literacy and then become systemic capable so that we can analyze, that we can intervene, that we can design systems. <coughs> and then with this systemic capability you see already a list of different roles that are today actually in the field of system science and research. And what I added to that mm -hmm. is two bigger circles, mm -hmm. one being the patterning instinct or the patterning wiring of human beings, and yeah. two being pattern literacy yeah. that can support, that informs system sensibility and, and supports system. Yeah. Yeah, just the yeah. point to connect to yeah. what I yeah. was saying before. Right. Um, happy uh, this is just uh, 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 to start now with a little bit of systems literacy. <laughs> uh, if we can agree on that, the system is an interconnected set of elements that is coherently organized in a way of achieves something, the purpose. These are the, the main elements you need so that you can say, ah, oh, I'm looking at a system. 
I, I hear you are speeding up. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's good we have two minutes. So like, go, go, go. Our discussion. Yeah, but to understand this interconnection is such a way as to achieve a desired purpose. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah. a this is a picture you may you may recognize uh, the iceberg the metaphor that you uh, have seen. Uh, the idea is, ha ha, here comes Peter. Uh, if we want to address the systems, uh, and now it doesn't matter which one, but we now want to intervene, we want to design, we want to engineer a uh, system, uh, we need to understand the mental models uh, that are uh, influencing our perception and thus uh, our approach, our contact with whatever system is. We need to understand the systemic structure, what does the system, how does it look like, and we need to understand the patterns which are now called the interaction between the components that create patterns, because this is um, where we can then uh, have decisions on <coughs> interventions. There are approaches, I will not go into the detail, of how to make uh, practitioner systems literate, even if they have no academic uh, pre knowledge uh, have, has been applied very, very successfully in different cases, some of them might have been involved. Uh, we also have an idea where to intervene in a system so that we can change this. This is not from Don Romero Milos again, uh, but it is her list, I must say. There would be others who would come up with a similar but not identical list, but anyhow, it is very interesting because Don Romero Milos has also a lot of, 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 of experience. It's time to finish. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Then <coughs> there is a, 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 uh, an idea about system thinking abilities. What we need to uh, to gain um, from mental to physical to emotional to spiritual uh, abilities. That is based on on Peter Sanchez's work. Um, and, haha, here comes the basic systems literacy. Also. Uh, that is, uh, we have a, a way how to formalize uh, these systems. And that is, we have nouns as variables, we have verbs as actions, we can draw uh, uh, the influence of uh, the variables to each other, we can uh, not only uh, model it in a, in a dynamic way, but also in a timely way. Um, uh, so there, are, there is a formal language <coughs> to define systems, um, and uh, and then we know of some of some so-called um, system archetypes <coughs> that are in, in almost all systems to be found. Uh, this comes now from from a work of uh, social ecological design, um, and they would be formalized as such. <laughs> Tragedy of the Commons is also a shift in the burden. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, um, the, the, the question I raise is, um, is systems thinking, and was pretty quick, but understanding systems <coughs> um, and the ability to uh, alter systems, can you say that, like change it, change mm -hmm. systems? Is this a, a necessity thinking capability? Or <laughs> could people also, I mean, I'm very radical also in my, in my own profession, or could people in, in, in certain or in almost every uh, um, aspect of life live without it? <laughs> because uh, I, I will not, personally, I will not fall into the trap to say, you need system thinking to understand uh, life or to understand the social behavior. It might be um, of high value for specific questions. But as many of you are actually systems literate, as far as I heard, because you're using the terminology, you're using the, the, the frameworks, you're using the concepts, uh, from in your different perspectives it works. <coughs> um, that is the question, especially as this is the prototype of of of, uh, of, uh, of a new program. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, okay. Thank you. Thank you. It says, I, is systems thinking, understanding systems, and the ability to alter systems, change systems, can I say that? Is a necessity of thinking capability? <laughs> you have a lot of can I say that? <laughs> Thank you. No, I'm trying to shorten it. Is, is systems thinking or understanding systems and the ability to alter systems a necessary thinking capability? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what is, yes. what is your answer? <laughs> no. Or could people in every aspect of life live without it? In other words, what am I doing with my career? You would not pick I that up. <laughs> 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 yeah. But it, no, maybe we are thinking here together about uh, is this, uh, is this uh, uh, available? Uh, part of a, of a future program <coughs> because uh, it would it would then take if the if the question could be answered with yes then it would take uh, another thinking process together uh, what should we actually bring into as you can imagine <coughs> with my opening I said 755 pages this is what we nowadays would consider as the knowledge base of all the different approaches to our systems, uh, sci uh, systems understanding. No, uh, we kind of don't have time for it, but it would be interesting. The question is like. You have a, you have a, you have a whole, whole problem. Yes. No, no, I, I wouldn't. Uh, ah, share the question. No, no, I, I was just wondering if there was. Let's do to... one and let's, let's move on. Huh? You can ask a question. Yeah. Well, it was not a question. Only it was a response to what you okay. said. Okay. So let's, 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 let's hear it. Yeah, yeah, let's okay. hear it. I mean, we. <laughs> what time. I, what I know, notice like, is time. that if you talk about complex problems of the day, you know, the big challenges, responsible research, for most people, to see outside their silo is such a revelation. So I'm not worried, you know, in your loops, I found that helpful. I mean, yeah. If only they, they start understanding that systems are something different. They don't need to get into technicality or 12 principles. I don't care. But it empowers them to start thinking outside their box. And that for me is, and I give them some simple to, to, to start understanding that. And, to, and also, you know, I, I make sure that different profiles are around one table. Don't allow them to be one discipline around the table. And then you see it, you know, it sets a, a something going. And then they might start le reading your difficult books or whatever. I don't care. It's it's, it's, the, it's taking off, you know, it's taking off the silo glasses and, and showing them that it's much more relevant for the complex problems of today to 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 do it transdisciplinary and to put people together. And then yes, there are a number of dynamics. And I usually say, if you need, read Donella Meadows, it'll it, it'll get you going. You know, the system zoo and the yeah. thinking in systems, a primer. That's it. And then they start understanding. Ultimate truth about systems. At least you have more co-thinkers. Co yeah. So, okay. Thank you. Thank so you. also for this summer school, you know, I'm, I'm willing to see what I did and, and what effect I had, and if that is what you're aiming at as well, or if you want to be more ambitious or less ambitious. But maybe we hear also the no to understand it better. Mm -hmm. No, it, it was asked the question. You said no. The the so problem the problem so is that we are <coughs> like uh, taking time away yeah, from other yes. modules. So it was kind of. Uh, uh, I mean, I can answer it in ten seconds, so okay. it's quite easy. It's one theory about um, explaining the world, uh, but you also can use another theory, for example, that you see everything as an actor. Uh, and I mean, here in the system, you say it has. For example, they act within certain ways and within a certain structure. But you can also have a theory which doesn't care of the structure, but of other aspects, for example. Okay. Other, other aspects. aspects. Um, yeah. But if we see it as a set of different lenses... It's one lens, I would say, yeah, and yeah. you have an endless amount of lenses of exactly. possible ones. And these are the ones that I guess we are uh, kind of trying out or mm -hmm. showing how they mm -hmm. can be applied. 
Yeah, I think it will be helpful to have it, but it's not necessary. And this was the original question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We should have we should have that stage.